All right, we're live. So welcome everybody. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's the weather down in Puerto Rico? Survived another earthquake, I see. Uh, it's gorgeous down here. Yeah. Did yeah. you feel the earthquake? I know I called you right afterwards and you were in the movies, but nope, didn't no, didn't you feel it? Cool. That's good. Well, we're excited because today um, we've got a special guest, um, Mr. Austin Robertson. So um, here, here's how it came about. So Austin is, is you're, you're in my organization. Um, you're, you're down in Springfield. You're a fairly newer agent, but here's what, what caught my attention was, um, I know we're on a kind of a private feed with a, with a couple agents um, in your area. And, you know, I've been noticing over the last couple of weeks, maybe months, you posting just different stuff about how you're generating leads, right? And you're in, and you've, you know, you're generating more leads and more leads. And the thing that really stuck out with me is you weren't just bragging about you getting all these leads coming in, being a newer agent, but you were sharing exactly how you're doing it with the other agents, right? Coming from what I consider more of an abundance mindset. You know, there's a lot of new agents, they find a great lead source and they're, they're scared and they hold on to it and they don't share it. And you right away are like, Hey guys, do this. Here's exactly what I'm doing. So I want to talk about that today on what you're doing. But first, before we get into that, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and where yeah, you come so, from. And yeah. So my name's Austin. I'm originally from Joplin. I uh, moved up to the Springfield area after we ended up um, losing our residency in the Joplin tornado. Me and my uh, two little girls at the time were um, directly in the midst of it in a pickup truck. It's a really awful ordeal. And uh, with that, we both decided that we, me and the, my two little girls at the time, decided that we wanted to start a new life. So uh, Springfield was only an hour away, so we moved up to here. Um, my dad is a retired fireman, so uh, I'd always wanted to do that, so I entered Fire Academy and got myself done to become a firefighter. Um, met my wife, Elena. Um, she came with uh, Brogan and Emmy, um, my other two children, and then we just had Finley four years ago, so I guess not just, but anyways, I'm well, married and have five kids. When, at that age, so it'd be yeah. like just, yeah. It feels like, like it just did, so married and have five kids. Um, about a, a little over a year ago, I started looking for something to do on the side. I had finished uh, a couple degrees that I've been working on. And uh, one of my really good friends had just recently left the fire service about three years ago to do real estate full time. Um, got a lot of flack from the guys when he started, you know, they'd make fun of him. And uh, you know, he bought a new pickup truck and guys were like, oh man, dude's going into debt and so on and so forth. Right. And, uh, and the next year, his wife bought a brand new Suburban, and he bought it, upgraded another new truck. And then year three, he is literally like, hey, man, being at work, I'm losing money. So I'm going to have to bow out. So when the time came for me to look for a side gig, I had sold um, Highline cars and Mercedes-Benz and stuff in the past. I thought, I'm going to to him and see if I might like this real estate thing. So okay. I... Uh, interned with him off and on for several months just kind of seeing if i liked it um i ended up really really enjoying it honestly um even working the phones to be honest with you i have a good yeah. time on the phone a lot of people well you not. come kind of from a sales background so right. you know right i think that's a huge yeah. advantage for for newer agents getting into it but so and this i'm gonna point out so then after that i joined his team um and essentially worked with him and i really thought man, i'm gonna do this for a couple of years and kind of get my like my my feet wet you know um i'll play off his name all this kind of stuff well what you find what i found out and anybody's um watching this and considering the team aspect is that i found out real quickly that most of the leads that i was generating were mine and came from my sphere and uh i gave away half of my money that I worked right. very hard for on it. And I also put somebody else's name in the advertisings for that and in the yard signs and on Facebook. And uh, I had been watching Brian Casella, he's an agent, an EXP agent mm -hmm. out in the LA area. 
um, while I was going through my classes, and EXP seemed very interesting to me anyways. Uh, Dustin Brom out in Salt Lake City has a massive major podcast. Listen to him a lot, you know, just digging, and I, I'm big into learning. So um, it seemed natural to look at EXP. Right. Um, I had to sit down with Gary Jensen here in Springfield, and within about 15 minutes, I was done. And I came over here at um, the very, very, very end of November, literally the last day. November. So how long, so let's go back. How long have you been licensed then? Uh, August, I want to say 17th. August 17th of 2019, right? Yep. I mean, brand new. (laughs) Yeah, so brand new, brand new in the business. And talking before this, you said, how many did you close in November? Was it November? Yeah, we did three in November, two in December. We'll do four in January, and we're set right now for two in February. All right. So, all right. So, just licensed in August, and you're already, you know, you're already going to have more deals than the average agent in a full year in just a couple months. So, that's amazing. Congratulations. So, let's talk about. I know you, you've been sharing it on our news feed, that we, our private feed, but how are you doing it? What are you doing? Right? Yeah. So real quick, I want to touch on the whole sharing on our little group feed. Um, I really wish something people would do more of. I know if you go into like our, our workplace from Facebook for EXP, there are people sharing stuff to a certain extent, but it always seems like it steps like one through five and step for step number six is always kind of left out. Uh-huh. So what I try to do is I really believe there is, a ton of business. Like if I want to sit down and talk to every homeowner in this whole area, there's no way in hell I could ever do it. So right. why not share that, share that knowledge, right? I mean, there's my sphere is different than your sphere. Like we're not gonna probably connect with the same people. Um mm. I'm I'm kind of with tattoos and I swear. So like my demographic is sometimes a little different. Um but basically my idea of how I wanted to market myself was I just wanted to provide something to people. So there is, there are plenty of people out there that are literally like, here's my listing. It's really cool. It's on blah, 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 and it costs blah, blah, blah. And their another post is, um, come to my open house two to four on Sunday. Right. Like people drown that stuff out. Like people don't even care. Um, and that's just it. So one of the biggest like home buying things for me is like, the process was complicated. Um, I didn't understand it. Financing was scary. So what I've done with my entire approach is try to come from a place of contribution. So I try to do things to generate leads that also um, give people something that they can use in their own lives. Whether it's, hey man, like here's five books you need to read. It'll help you if you're interested in starting real estate investing or Hey man, here's this interview with this really cool guy from our community that I did like a podcast with. Um, or like yesterday I did this, uh, ran this deal on marketplace and essentially it was just, Hey, look, you're paying for rent. Send me what you pay for rent. And I will literally give you an estimate of what that might be in terms of you were to buy a house. And then I'll send you three houses that, um, you know, that are in that price range in our area. So obviously I'm not going to guarantee them anything, but you have like a 10 to $15,000 range guesstimate with. Let's dive into that. So you went out on marketplace, right? On Facebook marketplace Mm -hmm. for people who aren't familiar, because I think Facebook marketplace is one of the most underutilized resources we have out there. I mean, if you go out right now, I don't care what city you're watching this in, go to Facebook marketplace right now and go into the homes for sale. And there's only a handful of homes and only a couple of them that are, you know, within the last day, right? Where if you go on Craigslist, there's a page of homes for sale, Facebook marketplace, there's, there's like five, six, 10 that have been listed on there. So it's very underutilized. So you go out on Facebook marketplace and did you just go in the discussion section or where did you go in there? I went to, I went to homes for sale actually. Okay. And just put it as like one, two, three, four my price and just literally put 
I think my headline was something like, you know, three homes that you could be buying for the same amount that you're paying your paying for your rent. Okay. And then in the description, I basically laid it out there like, hey, listen, I'm gonna try to help help you out here. Just let me know what your rent is, and I will show you where you could be as far as buying homes. Um, you know, roughly guesstimate. Obviously, and I'll send you three examples where those are where you wanted to live. So it takes a little time to respond to that, obviously. Sure. Um, but again, it's that place of contribution. So a lot of people think there's a study done um, and it showed like 70 plus percent of people that are currently running think you have to have over 700 credit scores to buy. So, and then like 64% of the study showed that they needed to have at least 20% down no matter what. So what that information told me was that people just are unaware of what, what's happening. Yeah. You know, I have a uh, I have a bank here in Springfield that'll do a zero down conventional for in Springfield city limits. Like, right. People don't know what they don't know. Right. So. Exactly. Um, and so, that what, was so just with that lead generation technique, right? That, that's something you, you tried new. What 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 did that generate for you yesterday? Uh, I have. Well, I had 42 messages come off of that. I still have. <laughs> I woke up to 11 more. I had to literally dig through those to find yours to get logged into here. Right. Um, and, and so if people were interested, I obviously I have a, another thing I highly recommend is go with the lender you like and create a lending app. Um, Kesey Black happened to go to the bank and also like this situation. Someone, someone was like, holy crap, I could buy 123 Main Street for the same price I'm renting. No way. <clears throat> Which I had find anything. I literally just, copy paste here's my app and right. you know my lender ended up getting i think three or four applications last night completely done i don't know if people actually logged in or downloaded it but it took me four minutes to post that and i've got four people trying to get pre-qualified well yeah and the, and the rest of them i mean you get them into a campaign right you, you get them into crm and that's 42 people that raised their hand saying you know what? Hey, I, I kind of want to buy right now. Beautiful. They may, it may take a year for some of them based on credit or whatever, get them with a good credit repair company, um, you know, to get them through the process, but you're building that pipeline up and next year, half of those 40 are, are maybe ready to buy. And, and totally. you're the first one that they've reached out to and you've kind of captured them. And, and if you look at, you know, NAR statistics on home buyers, 86% of home buyers will work with the first agent they, they talk with, right? So, I mean, you just have referrals from her okay where people she ran into and literally was like hey yeah my husband does real estate and then brought people in we've had amazing well, amazing relationships out of them so about half the deals have actually came more from my wife's sphere which is crazy um and then other than that you know i i employ several different um tactics you know i'm big on expired listings so as far as landing listings i beat up expired listings i was averaging um, about one and a half listings every two weeks off okay. of expired. So that opens me up for oh, a huge, um, again, leveraging my time, having very limited time being a fireman. Um, right. Well, let's stop there because I just want to, before this, you told us what, how many days a week do you work on real estate? Uh, typically if I'm, if I'm lucky three, typically two. Okay. So everybody so, who's listening, he's doing this working two days a week. He's got a full-time job. So, I mean, in, in essence, you're a part-time real estate agent. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and doing more, more business already in, what, August, September, October, November, December. In, in six months, you're doing more business than most agents do in a year. 
So congratulations there. And you know, one of the upsides, one of the reasons why I do put out so much to our little group, Matt, this is kind of important to know. Um, I end up getting to the point already where I have too much on my plate. So I'm only able to allocate so much time to people, you know, and I know that threshold. Right. So I have a girl that has all my contract to close that pay her for everything. Once they're out of contract, I pay somebody else to handle everything else. Um, but I also work with a lot of those mm -hmm. agents in, hey, I've got two people. These people are interested in buying. Here, here's a deal for you. And we split it. And I just pass out my buyer leads. If right. I get the point where I'm too, you know, too, um, too swamped. But so yeah, how many so, of those have you have you handed out over the past six months? Then I don't know honestly. Yeah. Got three or four decent ones out right now, so okay. we'll see. We'll see how those go. <laughs> All right, it's kind of a newer thing, but uh, you know, um, with those expired listings, I also own a lot of Facebook groups. So I own like Springfield Homes for Sale and Rent, Republic Homes for Sale and Rent, Nixon Ozark for Sale and Rent. So I have these groups that obviously I can post as much as I want in them, listings or whatever. And I invite everybody to them if they want to be a part of them. Right. But this is a platform where, let's say I do have a listing. It's not just on my page. Now I've got it in. Honestly, on a typical basis, if I have a listing, I post it on a weekly basis in at least 40 groups. Okay. So if you look How at the are you doing that. that are you doing that through like KV core or are you just going out and posting in groups manually and, you know? Yeah. So I create a squeeze page. Okay. And then on KV core, which is super easy. So if you guys want to do it, just a quick YouTube video. Um, and uh, you know, the other day I had a new listing out in Rogersville, it's just under a million dollars. I posted it in 32 groups the first night. And I want to say we had 47 leads in KV core the next morning. So in my internet leads aren't necessarily like the strongest percentage wise on right. conversion. It is a numbers game. You exactly. know what I mean? So the more we get out there, so really those those mm -hmm. Facebook groups, the content marketing, and and I don't know, just really come from that place of value. It be who the hell you are, you know. Um I have a lady that I talked to, her daughter does traveling volleyball, and she's like, I I want to get on this Facebook trend. I want to get into social media marketing, but I don't know what to post about. And I'm like, volleyball, literally. <laughs> right. Just go interview the volleyball coach. Go interview like whoever won state championship of volleyball and don't mention a damn thing about real estate. Just talk to people. Just be who, who you are and then people will respond to that. So I like Gary Vee's jab, 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 right hook. I'll always put out, I put out many pieces of content before I ever ask anybody for anything. Exactly. It's a, it's an amazing book, right? I know Sheila, you're a big fan of that one as well. So Gary mm -hmm. V is, you know, anybody who's watching this doesn't know very Gary Vanderchuk um, and you want to get into marketing online and learning how to, you know, become a bigger presence, check out Gary V. Um, he's got thousands of videos out there. Um, you know, and exa you're exactly right. You know, um, people want to work with people that they feel like they know and they feel like they're comfortable with. They don't want to, I mean, you'll never see me do a video here, mm -hmm. whether it's training or whatever, where I'm standing up in a suit and tie, you know, giving a presentation, you know, I may have a, a whiteboard behind me and kind of mm -hmm. writing stuff down, but man, that's not who I am. I mean, I, I can't, you know, I, I swore a couple of years ago I'm never wearing a suit or tie unless it's to a funeral or wedding, right? And that's the beautiful thing. If you really like break away from the status quo, you can do that. You know, I don't drive a Mercedes or a BMW. I drive a badass Challenger that's murdered out. Right. I wear flannel and boots and jeans and baseball caps to listing appointments. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, no. I'm sorry, guys. Like, it does. Like, if you are who you are and you're genuine, people want to work with that. And if you fake it, you're going to have a hard time building relationships with possible clients. Well, and they, they, and they, they know it, right? And, and we've got a popular saying on this is, um, and it, it's kind of the same thing, but if you're, you know, faking it through there or you're just desperate to get that listing, you know, they're going to smell that commission breath, mm -hmm. right? 
So um, same thing. Right. They're going to, they're going to smell that, you know, that you're non-genuine you're just in, mm -hmm. you're, you're faking it to just get the, get the listing or, you know, whatever, and just be who you are. Right. Um, so people can smell that smell your desperation also. Right. And so one thing I can tell you that being a new agent and being around a lot of other new agents um, is you got to be careful not to get into that mindset. Like people get their license and all of a sudden like, Oh crap, I should make a hundred K. Well, no, you haven't built your reputation. You're completely obscure. No one knows who the hell you are. You know, your best bet, your friends, family might help you sell a couple homes. Um, but people get desperate. And then once they don't get the results, that's why people, people fizzle out the first year of real estate or honestly anything else. Right. So if I'm hearing you correctly and correct me if I'm wrong, but you contribute a lot of your sex success so far to one coming from contribution. Right. Um, and you, you talked about, you know, uh, jab, jab hook. So you're constantly giving, you're giving, you know, three, four things of value before you're asking for any business. And, and if I'm also hearing right, you're not really asking for business, right? You're kind of, it's, it's here's some value. And then the business comes and, and you're, you're, you know, you're picking up, I mean, you, you talk about 42 leads yesterday and you talk about the one 40 some on your million dollar listing. And, and, and the, I mean, I know agents who would be happy to get that in a month. Right. Right. You know, and, and you're, you're generating it, but um, so what other specifics? So we're, we talked about squeeze pages. We talked about just going out on, on, you know, giving value of, I think that's genius. I'm going to actually do that later today. I'm going to go in our local area and do that exact thing. Right. And sure. see what kind of buyer leads I can drum up. Um, but you also talked about, you know, just having a work ethic, right? Um, right. Well, you didn't talk about it on here. You talked about it before we got on here. So you got in and you got your license in August. So then comes October, November, December, and you actually worked. Right. Yeah. Uh -oh froze up a little bit yeah yeah all right try it again yeah no so you you got you got license in in august october november december and you crushed it and because you actually had a work ethic right and so tell us a little bit about that and how you know what you saw in the market with the average agent yeah so you know i just i came in at what people consider like the bad time of the year <laughs> It seems like as the holiday season approaches, and this is you guys really should like grab onto and don't feed into their crap because I saw that people as the holiday season approached essentially were on vacation. They were putting their feet up. They weren't trying. You know, the amount of posts from agents that's been social media decreased by probably 70%. Um, and if it was anything, it was, here's my listing. You should look at it, you know. Right. And I saw that as an opportunity. Okay, well, if if these if these big guys aren't willing to crush it when it's cold out, this is my time to jump in. And so while I watched everybody else just put their feet up and relax, I was going till eight nine o'clock at night every day. I had the opportunity to. Right. And like I said, and because of that, you know, I'm. I'm going to close oh, close of four in January. So, I mean, <laughs> that's you know, I mean, that's a great way to start out 2020. So what are your goals for 2020? What does that look like? Well, um, my goals for 2020 is, uh, I would like to, me personally, they're more it's a personal goals than real estate goals. I want to net 125 K. Um, working part-time doing real right. estate. Um, I really think I can do it. I don't have a ton of overhead. I said most of my marketing is content marketing. So it's fairly, that's a great thing too. It's like you and a phone, like you don't need to spend a ton of money on <clears throat> Facebook ads or Google search words or billboards. Like just be you to the people that want to listen to you. It's fairly simple. Um, I want to do that. I've got some, uh, some school loans I want to pay off. I, uh, I'm going to cap, so I'm not concerned about that. But um, now that the year's kind of rolling along, now I'm kind of like, I, I think I'm going to shoot for that icon goal. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's a big one for me. 
I think it'd be pretty cool to be able to stand out and say, hey, look, I hit Icon in my first year of real estate working two days a week. Right. And for people who on this on this call who who aren't don't know what Icon is, we'll explain it real quick. It's basically capping out and then doing 20 more deals after that. So down in Springfield, that's probably what, about 33 to 35 deals? In yeah, I've got it pegged at 38 for some wiggle room. Okay, so your goal basically is to do about 38 deals. Your first full year of real estate is what yeah. you're saying. So that's and, I, and, and I believe it's very possible. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, very, and that's the thing is, I feel like a lot of people immediately, they, I'm brand new, I, I can't do that. They beat themselves up so much mentally that they, they, they cut their own legs off. So super, super doable, um, right. you know. And I think it'll happen. I also want to do, um, I got hooked up with uh, Dan Brown, who's a really good young real estate investor here in Springfield. He's also an EXP agent. Um, he's kind of taking me under his wing. So this year I'm going to try to do my first couple of flips as well. So right. I've been that's awesome. searching actively. And that's another really good uh, lead gen source I want to throw out there. I do a segment on Facebook where I talk about videos and, you know, podcasts and things like that. I have a ugly house series where I find like, I have a search through your MLS. You can set up a search for whatever you want. So I have to mm -hmm. anything under a hundred grand and anything under $50 a square foot. And I go and find like the ugliest house that comes out during the week. <laughs> and I go to a video walkthrough of it. That's great. Yeah. Matt, we have written for this week. We've written three offers on how ugly houses I've walked through. That's awesome. So, yeah. you know, it costs me no money. It's super fun. And think about like the hoarder shows. People love yes. that kind of crap, you know? Um, same thing like when you watch like live rescue and like fire departments that people love car wrecks oh yeah park your car by a car wreck and watch people drive by they'll break their neck trying to watch so it's same concept an ugly gross house people are going to watch you go through that thing well and if you and like you said if you're kind of looking yourself you go to this out, you may end up buying it yourself or, or, you know, or you're, you're at least building that you're getting those leads from all those investors and building that up. And so I want to get with you after this and we'll talk about the whole uh, express offer I buyer thing and how you can, you know, work that, but um, we have to wrap it up. Yep. So here's what I want to do. I want you to give everybody your contact information. So if anybody out there, cause we get agents from all over the country watching this, if you, if anybody has a referral for Springfield, Missouri, down in the Ozark area of Missouri, um, how do they get a hold of you if, if they want to? Sure. So social media handles just Austin Robertson Realtor, um, Austin Robertson on Facebook. Just Google me. There's a picture of me and my wife is my profile picture with big EXP glass door, best places to work deal. It's fairly easy to find. Awesome. Um, my personal cell is four one seven five seven six. Five one five four. You guys, are more than welcome to shoot me a text, call me, whatever. I'd love to chat, meet you. And then uh, my email is at the Robertson Group four one seven at gmail com. So um, one last thing I want to point out, and this comes from a speech I actually just heard from Gary V with content marketing, is the way things are going. You guys got to learn to self-brand and that's why i'm supposed to be in the content marketing i heard him say something along the lines of you know in 10 years from now you could be sitting in your kitchen or in your car and people are going to be talking about um selling their house and they're they're just going to say they're going to be google searching they're going to have 11 choices they're just going to say hey alexa or dodge or google whoever you know right i need a real estate agent and then chances are it's going to be the one that that company probably owns or um, the top one. So the reason I'm so big in the content marketing, you need to get to the point where when people, when you, those people go to get and they call for that service down the road, it's not, Hey, you know, Alexa, get me a realtor. It's Hey, Alexa, get Austin Robertson. Right. Exactly. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you very much for taking time out today to, uh, to jump on here.
and um, we'll definitely we'll we'll be in touch soon. I want to I want to do some other things together and kind of help one see if if you know Sheila, myself, James, and Shannon who aren't on here, but if what we can do to help you hit that icon this year, because because that would you know um, you know we're all for it. We we're we come from generosity ourselves. So um, again, thanks a lot for for being on, Sheila. You want to add anything? Or? Uh, you appreciate your feedback for everybody in the group and hopefully everybody will listen <clears throat> listen to what you said and put it into practice for themselves right take action guys so all right we'll see everybody next week <laughs>